My name is Evan Santapani. I'm a professional bodybuilder. That means I eat a lot. Luckily, I love to cook as much as I love to eat. For me, it's essential to not only eat in a way that supports my goals, but is as enjoyable and as healthy as possible. Follow along. We'll cook, we'll eat, and who knows what else. This is Evan's World. done what's going on guys I'm coming to you today with some information I think you are gonna find incredibly useful if you guys watch it or anything like me you eat a fair amount of rice and as a bodybuilder Rice is a very common carbohydrate source, and there's a reason for that. A lot of it is related to its digestibility and the fact that it tastes good, uh, but rice is a gluten-free carbohydrate source, meaning it's, uh, it's sensitive on the digestive tract, and it's cheap, so bodybuilders like it. <laughs> Actually, pretty much the whole world likes rice. Um, there's so many different types of rices out there. There's jasmine, basmati, um, parboiled, wild rice, which actually isn't even really rice, um, but that's besides the point. There's long green, short green, so on and so forth. So before we even talk about seasoning and spicing your rice, which is what I'm going to do, let's talk about the rice itself. I've had the best luck over the years with bas basmati rice. Now, I prefer basmati because it's not sticky. Jasmine rice can get very cl uh, clumpy and sticky and kind of wet, and I don't like it. Basmati, the grains are a little bit more defined, it's a little bit lighter, a little more fluffy, uh, the taste is great. The only thing I'm gonna tell you is I would not buy parboiled rice. Texturally speaking, it's a little harder. Uh, it doesn't pick up flavor as well. Parboiled means it's been, essentially it's been cooked once. It's supposed to be suitable for people who have blood sugar control problems because Parboiled rice doesn't break down super easy. Just like if you were to undercook your pasta, it will break down slower, it will digest more slowly, meaning the sugars will release more slowly into your bloodstream, not causing a large spike in blood sugar. However, for most of you, I'm assuming a lot of you, uh, most of you have, your, your blood sugar control is just fine, you can eat the kind of rice you prefer. Oh, but before we go any further, let's talk about brown rice versus white rice. I prefer white rice. I don't like the taste of brown rice. I feel that the digestibility of it is poor. And as it relates to arsenic in rice, which has been a subject recently, from what I understand, the arsenic is contained more in the hull of the rice, that's the outer sheathing, which if you eat white rice, it has been removed. So I all around recommend white rice, not only for taste, but for function. Let's get down to spicing your rice. A lot of you probably just eat your rice plain. Um, there's so many good things you could do to make your rice flavorful and enjoyable and something you actually look forward to eating. I'm going to give you several different combinations that I kind of keep in rotation that I found to work really, really well. Now, the first one is saffron and scallion. It's aside from it tasting really, really great, there's nothing I'm gonna, I could say about it that it's really, um, you know, crazy healthful or that really stands out uh, other than it just for being great for taste. If you're not familiar with saffron, it comes in little tiny, tiny threads. And a jar this size, just for this little amount of saffron, it's about $15. However, it goes pretty far because you only use literally two or three of these threads at a time. And it will, you'd be amazed how much flavor it gives to the rice and, I, and it turns it this really nice color. So this plus some scallion really gives the rice a really aromatic and fresh and bright taste. Great, great combination. Another one of my favorites is to combine some type of curry powder with fresh grated turmeric root. Now, there's a million different curry combinations. 
And what I would suggest is just trying some different ones, seeing which ones you like. Some of them are stronger. Some of them will include ingredients that you wouldn't expect like cinnamon. Right now, I currently use these two. I'll use a half a teaspoon of each because I kind of like the flavor of both of them combined. This curry, for example, has turmeric, paprika, fenugreek, coriander, black pepper, cumin, ginger, celery, seed, cloves, caraway, and cayenne pepper. Whereas this, even though it's not really a curry, it's a masala, contains cardamom, cinnamon, cloves, cumin, black pepper, and coriander. So some overlapping ingredients. But what's interesting to know about a lot of curry powders is that they contain ingredients that are actually very good for your digestion. They, they cause the release of gastric juices. They bolster digestive fire, meaning digestive strength. And they're good, a lot of them, for killing bad bacteria. Uh, you know, even in modern day India, uh, spices are still heavily, heavily used. And a lot of it dates back to times when refrigeration wasn't as widely available. So a lot of spices were used to preserve meat and to kill bacteria. And they could still be used for those purposes. And even when added to a um, you know, a modern diet will help to balance gut bacteria. I like to include in it some fresh turmeric root, which you can see inside it's very, it's like a deep, deep orange. And using powdered turmeric, no, is not the same as using the root. Uh, a lot of times when roots or herbs or anything else is converted from fresh to a powder, volatile oils and other active constituents that you and I want that are very beneficial are lost, unfortunately. So to opt for fresh when possible is usually the way you want to go. If I were going to cook a serving of rice, I would probably, I would take about this much turmeric and you can see my grater is kind of permanently stained from grating this. And I use a rice cooker, right? So I'll combine water, rice, and then the ingredients right in here. So I'll grate the turmeric. This is good because it's very fine right in here. Now, some people say, well, do you have to grate it? Can I just cut this up? No, you have something like a root. It requires a lot to pull all the active constituents out of it. If you were making a tea, you would have to boil and boil and boil something like this for many hours to get it all out. Whereas you could physically expose it, open it up, increase the surface area, and allow all the goodness that's in this root to be released into the rice. So that's what I recommend. A microplane grater is certainly worth investing in. Be careful with turmeric root because <laughs> it'll stain everything. Your fingers will be all orange and yellow, your fingernails. Uh, my wife routinely yells at me because I'll get it all over the sink and the sponge and uh, other white kitchen utensils and it will eventually come out but it takes a while so be careful wear gloves uh, I, it doesn't really bother me if you know I've got some yellow on my fingers I remember one time I <laughs> I must have had some on my fingers and I you know was rubbing my face I said oh my god why the hell's my 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 face all looked I looked like I had jaundice <laughs> uh, so just be mindful here's kind of a different take on rice where I combine shiitake mushrooms and seaweed this particular seaweed is called dulse. Great, great source of not only potassium, but also iodine. I believe just a serving about this size contains, what is it? Almost a thousand percent of your recommended daily value of iodine, in addition to a lot of other vitamins and minerals. And as a lot of you may well know, modern diets are notoriously low in iodine, namely because of soil depletion. So including some seaweed in your diet may not be a bad idea. Now, Asia has been doing this combination of mushrooms and seaweed for many, many years, creating uh, soup broths out of it. Why the combination of the two? Um, I believe it's related to naturally occurring glutamates in these ingredients, which in the Asian, Asian terminology, that word umami, which is kind of that, you know, it's not salty or savory or sweet or sour. It's that, um, that different element of taste, which it's very flavorful. <laughs> so some seaweed, some mushroom, and maybe a little bit of, of sea salt added to your rice. Beautiful. Now, not to mention that shiitake mushrooms have benefits of their own uh, in terms of uh, boosting the immune system and 
uh, being known to to combat viruses, etc. Mushrooms definitely something that's good to include in your diet, and they taste delicious. It'll add a, an earthy and meaty taste to your rice. Now, here's my current favorite. I'm, I'm currently using the hell out of this combination. It's cardamom and fresh ginger. Now, cardamom, until a couple months ago, I had never used it. Now, if you guys purchase this and you give it a smell, you say, wow, it, it's a strong smell, but almost like a, a clean, aromatic, almost like a citrus type smell. Very, very nice. It could, it could even be used in sweet uh, baking. I know sometimes it's used in uh, the creation of uh, pastries and some cakes and things like that, but it could also be used in uh, savory type applications. Now this combined with the ginger, really, really delicious and great for your digestion. Again, the ginger being a root, just like the turmeric, it should be grated up. Get your microplane grater. I like a piece about this size. And uh, you know, when I make rice, usually it's, it's, I make rice for the day in my rice cooker. It'll usually be three to four servings of rice. So a piece of ginger this size would be about appropriate for me. And uh, boy, it adds a really just flavorful and delicious and clean taste to the rice. Ginger, of course, being great for your immune system and great for killing bugs and bacteria and viruses, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and also great for killing bad gut bacteria. Very, very good for your digestive system. Almost a very similar thing with the cardamom. Good for offing bad bacteria. And the combination of these two, they really taste delicious. Moving on, this is another one of my favorite combinations. It's fresh parsley, some fresh marjoram, which is um, still growing in my garden currently. I cut earlier and some chives now i have some dried marjoram here which i would use in the event that i didn't have the fresh stuff but i can tell you you know if you guys were here i would have you rub one of these leaves smell your finger then and then also smell the dried stuff and i can tell you it's nothing compared to the fresh stuff if you don't have any fresh stuff use the dried stuff i've got some chives here which give it a really nice flavor so usually what i'll do is i will put the marjoram and the chives in the rice cooker with the rice and the water, let it cook. And at the end, I'll chop up a big handful of fresh parsley and throw it in there, toss it around, turn the rice cooker off and just let the, the heat that's already existing in there kind of wilt the spinach or the spinach, <laughs> the parsley. <laughs> but nah, I, I don't like to cook the parsley so much throughout the whole process because it just turns it like a, you know, a pale brown, you know, green color. And uh, the parsley is just much more flavorful and delicious when it's, when it's fresh. You know, not only is every one of these combinations absolutely delicious, but they pretty much all have their own benefits, you know, outside of just tasting good. You know, being good for your digestion, something like this, hoping to boost your immune system and even assist your thyroid. There's definitely no reason to just be eating plain rice. You could really throw anything in that rice cooker. Uh, and if you don't have a rice cooker, damn it, get one. This is e easily the best kitchen tool that I've ever purchased. The night before, I'll put my rice, water in the rice cooker, add the ingredients, set the timer. It's done the next day, whatever time I choose. And it'll then, it kicks over and it stays warm. So I have warm rice ready to eat whenever I want it. Get your hands on a rice cooker, try some new ingredients, enjoy yourself. I hope you found this useful. Stay tuned, subscribe to my YouTube channel um, because there will be more videos to come.